G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to have a look at a plane that is a little bit strange. This is the Sea Vixen FAW Mark II, and it's been on the channel before, but honestly, I like this plane so much that we're gonna give it another look. The Sea Vixen is one of those planes that only has missiles, and therefore is uh, a little bit hard to play in some circumstances. I really do wish this thing had a gun pod, but I don't think it ever got one, so we're kind of shit out of luck here. We don't have any other opportunities to use any guns. Uh, this thing does come with unguided rockets, but if you're going to use unguided rockets in an air-to-air -air capacity, uh, I think you might as well just use the red tops. So, this particular plane has a couple of outstanding characteristics. The first one being the red tops. The red tops are pretty damn strong, 16G overload, uh, decent 2.5km effective range, um, at least in a chase circumstance, which is going to be your main engagement situation because you are, you know, you, you don't have that all aspect lock, unfortunately. That's just the way these missiles work. Um, this plane, as I understand it, is an interceptor or a bomber interceptor, which is why it was given red tops. Uh, red tops, I believe, are bomber interception missiles, which is why the English Electric Lightning had uh, red tops. So, the Sea Vixen, it's got four of these missiles. It's got a radar and RWR to guide them. No flares and chaff, but that's okay. You don't really need it. This plane tops out at a generous 1100 kilometers per hour at 100 meters, which means that you are going to be fairly quick relative to your competition. Things like the MiG-15 BIS top out at about 1050. The F-2 Sabre, which is at 9.0, tops out at 1114. The Hunter F-1 tops out at, I think, 1117, along with the MiG-17. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And I believe the G91YS at uh, 9.7, which is about as high as you'll get, tops out at 1140 something. So you're going to be a little bit slower than a YS. Um, but of course, this plane sort of relies on being on the forefront, which is one of its downsides that we'll talk about a little bit later. The Sea Vixen, of course, is a premium. Uh, and if you guys want to buy this plane, which uh, I'll leave my recommendation till a little bit later on in the video once we've sort of had a look at the gameplay footage and, and made a decision based off that. Uh, but of course, if you want to play, uh, play this plane, if you want to buy this plane, uh, it is a premium. And if you do want to buy some Golden Eagles to purchase this, uh, then you can use my d decal link in the description below. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal. That makes every little bit of a dis difference. And of course, you guys get a 3% discount while you're at it. So the Sea Vixen has a couple of little... Uh, caveats let's say it's got uh, no afterburner so you're going to have a little bit of trouble at altitude you're not going to be as good as something like the f3h or the f86k at uh, those higher altitudes but you do have enough thrust here to sort of get to the altitude of things like the b57 and the tu4 it also gives you enough altitude to get over uh, a decent amount of your opponents if you do decide to side climb uh, but this is a decision that you can't really make lightly now the B-57 here has gotten in himself into a bit of a pickle. He's become really, really slow, and so that makes it a very, very easy target. But this second B-57 is uh, coming directly head-on, and I can't really do any head-on stuff in this plane. Uh, it's pretty much pretty much a, a forfeit. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll underneath, out of the way of the B-57's guns. He's got a fairly bulky airframe, and so it does uh, have a fair amount of trouble sort of clipping onto its uh, opponents. So we're going to avoid that one and just continue forward because a dogfight with a B-57 is going to end in tragedy. And that brings me to the second uh, little caveat with this plane. It is a very heavy plane. You got to remember that this plane is a uh, twin seat, twin engine, really, really large plane. It's, it's pretty big. It's bigger than a MiG-15 and uh, anything bigger than the MiG-15 will tend to turn worse than a MiG-15 as a, as a very generalized rule. Uh, you think about like the Ki-200 down there, it turns better than the MiG-15. Uh, anything like the uh, G-91s, they turn better than the MiG-15. The only difference is with uh, slow fat jets like the F-84F, uh, everything can outturn the F-84F and the F-84F is a pile of steaming hot garbage. So speaking of steaming hot garbage, we are going to send uh, a missile down to this R2Y2 to turn it into a steaming hot pile of garbage because he's uh, very, very slow. Now the RTY2 has pretty poor uh, acceleration, as I understand it, uh, and the Kai 200 has extremely good acceleration. So uh, I went for the one with the less acceleration, the one that was a little bit uh, more of an easy picking, 
And that's kind of the way that you're going to be doing things in the C Vixen. You can't really be taking the most daring maneuvers because this plane just doesn't have the capability to be super aggressive. You can't really do sort of crazy maneuvers and have crazy dogfights. You're just going to be kind of intercepting, if you will. Uh, and to me, it is a little bit boring, but it's also a little bit enjoyable because you just sort of sit on the periphery, uh, pick your target, and then sort of have your fill, if you will. I kind of feel like the Sea Vixen shouldn't be called the Sea Vixen, it should be called the, the Sea Vulture, because that's kind of the way that you play this plane. You just look for a plane that is an opportunity target, uh, and then you go for it, and have no remorse, even if it's a poor, starving little F-80C, because even the F-80C has the opportunity to get eaten once in a while. So, this uh, last kill here we're going to show, before cutting forward a little bit, is the B-57. Again, very, very slow targets, and this is what the red top really prides itself on. That ability to hit a really slow target, uh, but with a decent deflection because of that 16G overload. Uh, anything traveling above a thousand kilometers per hour, you're gonna have a fat chance of hitting. Uh, sub 1000, I would absolutely go for it at a range of two and a half kilometers. Uh, but of course, you've gotta remember that uh, planes that have, you know, fairly good acceleration uh, or good energy retention in turns are going to find it very easy to, uh, you know, mitigate the effects of your missile. Now, this F-84F here has decided to go for AA, which is an excellent decision for me, because that means that the F-84F is going to be a very, very easy target. Now, I have been a little bit ambitious with my missile here, and you can tell that it hasn't quite landed, because that's the, the downside of the red top. It has quite a short range, but uh, following it up with a second missile means that uh, an ace is in the bag very, very easily. So, that's kind of what the C Vixen is like when you're on top, when you're always in the uh, aggressive situation. But um, what happens when the roles reverse? What happens when you find yourself in a situation where you're not as prevalent, where you're not as dominant as you might otherwise hope to be? Now, this match is particularly interesting because it turns out uh, in a kind of humorous way. This was a match that was played on stream, actually. So if you guys want to head down to the link in the description below, uh, there is a link to my Twitch profile, and you guys can uh, drop a follow there. You might catch a stream, um, especially especially when I'm on afternoons at work. So it gives me a great opportunity to stream in, uh, in, in prime time when there's plenty of uh, people sleeping. So I can, uh, I can kind of... You know, have no no distractions. So we have a uh, lovely F-86 coming up to altitude here. The F-86 is going to be a fair trouble because they have a fair amount of speed. They can match you in your top speed. And of course, uh, they have guns. So they can do head-ons, which is something that you can't do. Uh, and of course, they're also quite fast. Uh, being at about 800 kilometers per hour is almost enough to dodge the red top. And so if you're in a situation where you sort of have no other choice but to use the missile, uh, you, you've kind of got nothing else. And so you need to do that in a rear uh, sort of rear aspect, of course. So you're, you're kind of narrowed down for options when it comes to these sabers. And the sabers are going to give you some of the most problems. The other problem that you might find is the J7-2 or the MiG-21s. They are faster than you, and of course they turn better than you. They can sort of sit behind you and do whatever the hell they want, which sucks. Uh, if you can, try and avoid them at all costs, and try and have a friendly there to clean them up for you, or alternatively be the one that is doing the cleaning up. Now, I've uh, spotted in the distance the uh, A4, but the F-86 is coming in quite fast. So I'm going to put the nose down a little bit and try and get some distance away. Uh, and I'm going to see with the uh, A4 here how I can lock him. It looks like he's in a vertical, so I should be able to get that kill quite easily. The uh, red top is quite slow, but it still makes its mark very, very easily. 16G overload in a glide, very easy kill there. So we're going to go up into a vertical and try and get behind this uh, MD-452 here. Uh, I believe it's a Mystere 2C. And uh, hopefully it just sort of presents himself as a nice target. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to happen. You can see he's very, very, very slow. And that presents the perfect target right there, sending a red top away. Hopefully it lands beautifully. And of course it does, because it's a red top. Now the F-86 is coming straight back. And it looks like 
I thought originally he was in a really shitty situation, uh, but it turns out he was coming straight towards me, and uh, now this leaves me in a bit of a predicament. Do I bait for the uh, for the F30 and uh, get the the MiG-15 to get him to to kill him? Great bait, mate, type thing. Or do I uh, sort of run? And I've chosen to sort of try and bait the F86. I know roughly who this guy is. I understand that he's quite a good player. Uh, and judging by the way that he plays, he plays extremely disciplined. And so uh, I need to make sure that I I sort of capitalize when he's not paying attention, which is going to be fairly few and far between. I noticed that he's heading straight up for me at the last second, and the F9F manages to catch that third missile in the face, which is perfect for me. And then I noticed the other F84, oh, F86 rather, uh, is uh, making distance against me. So I need to get back to base. I need to find some friendlies because in this case, you actually can't do anything. There's literally nothing that you can do. Um, the F86 is closing in and maybe you could get some altitude, uh, but I'm actually unsure of the performance of this plane at altitude versus the F86F. My teammates are pretty much nowhere to be found, uh, and the F-86 is actually closing quite rapidly, so I decided to go for the dogfight, and uh, I'm going to roll over once and try and uh, make this guy overshoot, and it will work for a little while, uh, but there will be a point where the F-86 is just miles better, because it's just so much lighter, and uh, that's kind of the, the caveat that you have with this plane. You need to be on the offensive at all times, because if you're on the defensive, you end up pretty much boned. There's nothing you can do. And you can see that the F-86 is uh, rolling around to the point where I just can't get my guns on. And you can see him slowly gaining on me. Uh, you can see that it's getting harder and harder and harder progressively to uh, get a shot. Or at least to sort of line my plane up with his in a sort of situation that's advantageous. With uh, every roll down, it just gets worse and worse. And even though I've dropped my throttle like this, I really can't keep that up for a long time. I'm going to run out of energy. And of course, when I run out of energy, I run out of turning capability. Even with that giant wing area, there's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, and I really just need to book it back to base before it ends up really, really badly. But uh, I decided in this case that maybe if I head back, say, to the SU-7 here, um, I could rely on my twin engines to provide some decent acceleration. Uh, and I was pretty wrong. On both cases. The SU-7 blasts past, as if I don't exist, um, and decides to leave me hanging. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Uh, and so I'm just sustaining a lot of damage here. The uh, other SU-7 comes back, and I'm really in a fight for my life here. I'm using my rudder to sort of wiggle out of the way, uh, and it's barely, barely working. The F-86 is uh, has blown over, but of course I'm so damaged that it doesn't really fucking matter. Uh, so I'm just going to book it back to base. I've got nothing else to do. If I tried to keep dogfighting, I would just be meat. Uh, and so if I head back to my airfield, at least the MiG-15 can come and rescue me. Uh, and I can also sort of cower under the cover of the AA like a little bitch. But that's okay. I'm a little bitch that lived. <laughs> I actually want to know your thoughts about uh, what, what, would, what would Jesus do? What, what would you guys do in a situation like this? Would you run back to the airfield or would you just fight and have a 99% chance of dying here? I feel like running back to the airfield is a good choice here because at the same time I get to repair um, and of course I get the uh, MiG-15 to give me the opportunity to, uh, you know, get someone off my ass. Of course, I don't think he's on a single kill at this point and so if I can, if I can just get this guy a kill, maybe that is also a good thing. Now the F-86 decides that uh, I'm a very, very juicy target but until the uh, airfield AA opens up, I think he's going to keep on my six, and it looks like the uh, airfield AA is starting to do its job, and he has now disengaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back around. I'm going to see if the uh, MiG-15 needs a hand, and uh, very, very slowly, you can just see how damaged I am. If I had tried a dogfight, I would have just been sort of rolling my wings in a, in a, in a circle and kind of going nowhere. So what's happening here? The F-86 looks like he's pursuing the MiG-15 in a vertical, and... Um, I really, I really don't know what's going on here. It looks like the uh, F-86 is doing the classic thing that we all like to know as throwing the match away. He's going directly vertical for a MiG-15 that has a speed advantage over him, and uh, that basically leaves him a sitting duck for my last red top. Like, I was on stream and I could not believe this level of bot gameplay. This is the most paid actor shit I've ever seen in my life. But I tell you what, when this plane is on top, it's unstoppable. It's great. It is so much fun. 
But the moment you run out of teammates, that's it. You can kiss your ass goodbye. And that's why this plane is a bit of a pass for a recommendation. To grind, at least. If you're going to grind out a tech tree, grab something else. Talisman something. Maybe buy a tier 4 or a tier 5 instead. But uh, if you're going to have fun, I, I would put this in the same category as the AVRE. This is, is the AVRE of Jets, basically. So, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. This match doesn't go on much further. The enemies both died to the MiG-15. I don't know how, but good on the MiG-15. And, of course, thank you to Get Wrecked for uh, being such a chad. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. And I'll catch you next time. P.S. Buy my decal.